going on guys welcome back welcome back to my first lure making tutorial we're uh, about a week into February and uh, I'm gonna be making some ice fishing jigs um, I'm getting pretty low I've lost a couple the past couple weeks um, so I'm gonna show you guys how I make these these are relatively easy to make compared to some of the other lures that I make if you guys have been following my channel over the past year and a half you guys know that I make the majority of the fishing lures that I use ice fishing jigs being one of them so this is gonna be the first tutorial on uh, how I make these so I'm going to go step by step on how to make them, some safety stuff, because when you deal with lead, which is what these are made out of, you got to be super careful. Um, but real quick before I get started, I just want to talk about basic lead safety. Um, before you start getting into pouring jigs, I suggest you do some thorough research beforehand, because dealing with lead, um, you can get into some problems. But the big things you want to be careful with is you don't want to have lead all over your house. You don't want little pieces of lead all over your house. You don't want little shavings of lead all over your house. So if you guys get them into your body, um, it can cause you some serious problems. Even more so with kids. You know, if kids get to the point where they're getting lead into their system, it's very bad. So you want to be super, super, super careful um, when you're messing around, pouring, and uh, making fishing lures with lead. Um, as you guys are going to see, I am going to be pouring inside today, which I don't recommend and I try not to make a habit of. Uh, it's below zero today with 40 mile an hour wind and uh, I just don't want to go outside and uh, pour in them conditions. So what I have today is I have two windows open. I have the door to my wood stove right next to me open, which is in the kitchen where I'm going to be pouring. Um, with that door open, that's going to be sucking air through the house up, uh, up my chimney. Um, I'm going to be pouring on my uh, kitchen stove. Um, I'll show you guys my exact setup once I get talking here in a minute. I have my fan above my stove going, so that's going to ventilate up. I'm going to have fresh air coming in through the windows. So I'm not worried about melting lead at all inside today. Um, my pot's only going to be on for about 10 minutes. And the good thing about these little ice fishing jigs is that you can pour them with your lead super, super low. You don't have to have your uh, lead at a high temp to pour these. But again, I don't recommend doing it, and I personally, I, I don't pour a lot inside. All right, guys, so I think we talked enough um, for the intro. I'm going to explain what I do when I'm doing it. I'll, I'll, I'll do some safety talk as I'm going through certain steps, but we're going to get started guys. We're going to hop right into it. All right guys, so this is my ice fishing jig setup. This is what I'm using to pour these ice fishing jigs. This is just a very basic setup. I have my Lee melting pot sitting inside a cheap baking tray. I uh, keep it inside a baking tray. As you can see, there's a little bit of a drip. Sometimes I just don't like that to go all over the surface I'm working on. So if you put it in a uh, tray like this, um, it works really well. And this tray stays right with my melting pot, so there's no chance that this tray could get used um, for actual cooking. So this is my uh, this is my Lee melting pot. Lead should be ready to go. Getting the glare. Lead's ready to go. So this lead is ready to go. And uh, here's a few things you need to pour the jigs. I've already poured a few, as you can see. Um, you need your hooks. This is a size six. I have a size four. These are your wire bait keepers. That's what keeps your uh, bait on. This is the finished product. I'll show you guys actually how I pour it here in a second. So I'll show you the, the jig mold. This is a do it jig mold, getting a little bit of a glare. You can pick these things up anywhere from eBay to tackle stores. Um, Cabela sells them. You can find a do it mold pretty much anywhere. So this mold I'm gonna be running today, I can pour anywhere from a 1 16th to a 3 8 So I got 1 16th, 1 8th, 3 16th, quarter, 5 16th, and uh, the 3 8 And all these molds tell you what size hook you should use. I do kind of vary them a little bit. Like with this, uh, let's see if I can get it in focus. The 1 16th, so you should use a number four. I'm gonna be using it with a number six. And we're also gonna be pouring the size 1 8th, which says you should use a number two. I'm going to be using a number four. So you can change a little bit what you want to do hook-wise. So trying to figure out the best way to show you guys before I actually start pouring. All right, so we're going to start with the 1 16th. And what you do is you take one of these wire keepers and you put it in the wire keeper slot. I'm going to try my best to uh, keep my fingers out of the way so you guys can see. So the wire keeper is in place there. Now we're going to take the size 6 hook. And that is going to sit right up against the wire bait keeper. Just like that. And you make, you make sure everything's sitting right. Close the mold. 
so that mold's ready to go. Sometimes if the hooks don't line up, this won't close all the way. Okay, I'm gonna try my best to uh, get a close-up shot here. So you just line up whatever jig you're doing, lift, pour, drop it, and you should have a nice ice fishing jig. That easy. So what I do is just grab it by the hook, do a quick inspection. This part here is your sprue hole. I'll trim that off later in the video, but that's a uh, perfectly poor jig head. And all you do is just repeat that process for however many jigs you want. All right, so them are all matched up, ready to go. Close the mold, in we go. Another perfect ice fishing jig. All right, so now we're gonna pour the 1 8 but that's a little bigger of a mold, so I'm going to uh, just warm it up a few times before we actually get the hooks in there. Just recycling that lead right back in. Alright, so I normally find that after just a couple warm-up pours, these are ready to go. So basically the same process. A little different of a hook. This is more of a standard jig hook. Same exact thing. Nothing different with the mold. Put the keeper in, put the hook in, close it and pour it. So there we have a perfect 1 8 ounce ice fishing jig with a wire keeper. So just a, a close up. See if I can get a close up anyway. You guys can see the difference what, you know, just the next size up makes. So there's a pretty big difference there. That's why I changed the size of the hook. All right, there we go. Perfect jig. I'll have to trim that off later, but uh, I'll do that in the next step. I'll show you guys what I do. All right, we'll do one more with this size. Okay, here we go. Comes out perfect just about every time. And I try my best not to touch bare lead. That's why I use pliers. Um, like I said earlier, lead can give you all kinds of problems if you uh, aren't careful with it. This setup I have here, I'm not using gloves because I'm using my bottom pour and I'm using the jigs where my hand is well far enough away, you know, from the actual sprue hole here. Um, with my spinner baits, I poured these a couple months ago. I have to hand pour these, so I have a different melting pot. And when I pour uh, spinner baits, I do use gloves, I do use um, eye protection. I don't with these ice fishing jigs. Just because it's such a small amount of lead that I'm pouring out of this melting pot. It's much safer than um, the old hand pouring style that most people uh, do. Let's see. Alright, so what we're going to do is I'm just going to kind of crank these out. I'm not going to show you guys every one because that will get kind of monotonous. But I'm going to crank out, I don't know, 20, 30, 40 of these. Then I'll catch back up with you guys. And if you're new to pouring lead... Um, lead will develop what's called slag. If you can see on there, it kind of looks chunky on top. What you have to do is get that, that top layer off because that will just sit on top and build up and build up and build up. And if you run your mold down low enough, it'll actually get in the uh, drain hole and cause you a bunch of problems. So I'm going to clean that off with a spoon. And I keep a uh, little container here that I dump it in. And for this part, I am going to wear gloves. Anytime I get real close to the lead or potential of dropping lead on my, my hand, I I'll put gloves on. And what I'm doing is kind of rubbing the sides. Just kind of scraping the sides, you know, getting all that stuff off. Show you that lead now. Lead should be nice and shiny. Yeah, see how that's much shinier. That's how I try to leave my lead. Uh, this is unplugged, so this is actually cooling down. All right, so this next part, I like to put exam gloves on because I'm going to be getting close to the bare lead there. And what I do is I just grab right by the base of the the jig there, and I just rock back and forth, and that gives you a pretty clean jig. Once in a while, once in a while you get a little rough patch. 
and what I do is I just kind of pinch the nose and just drag these teeth along the edge of it and that cleans it up pretty well. And I try to do it over the pour pot just so I don't uh, get lead everywhere again. And that's about all you have to do for cleanup with these ice fishing jigs. Sometimes you can actually turn the nose over. So you just try to be really careful. Just grab a bunch of little mini twists back and forth. It's enough to work that lead off. And you can just re-pour this. And same thing, I'm just gonna scrape the bottom just a little. And that cleans it up pretty nice. So, same with the smaller ones. These smaller ones, you gotta be a little more careful. And again, the less lead you have, the less strength you're gonna have up in the nose there. So, you just grab, twist, really easy. A little easier than I did with the other one, just because it's a smaller jig. And that, uh, that actually trimmed up really well. Just a little bit of a scrape and that'll be good to go. It's probably not showing on the camera because these GoPros don't focus well, but that jig is ready to paint. All right, so here's one I was finishing up. You can see that one has a little more of a, um, an area there I'm gonna have to trim off. I should be able to scratch that off, but that one didn't twist off quite as good as the other ones did. All right, that came out pretty good. I almost thought I'd have to get a razor blade, but uh, that one trimmed off fine. All right, there we go. It's just about 40 jigs poured and ready to go. Here is the 1 8th. Here's the 1 16th. This was just that oddball 1 8th I did with the uh, size 6 hook. Keep that one off to the side. But these jigs are ready for paint, so that's the uh, next step we're going to do. All right, so just real quick before I move on to uh, painting these jigs, I just wanted to show you guys my work area real quick. As you can see, you know, there's no excess lead, you know, kicking around my stove here. Um, there is some in the tray here, them little silvery things, them are uh, little scrap pieces of lead that drip off the spout there. And that's why I really like to keep everything in a tray, just so you can contain what you work with. I try my best to keep the jigs on a piece of paper. Once in a while, I'll slack and not use a piece of paper, but um, I try my best to. And once this is all off, I'm going to clean this down thoroughly with soap and water. And with the two windows going and this fan going, um, we have more than enough ventilation. So I just wanted to mention that real quick. As you guys can see, um, this workstation is completely clear. You know, I try my best not to pour inside, but I need to get some jigs done and it's too cold to do it outside and too windy to do it. So um, if you take the proper precautions, you can pour inside. All right, guys, so we're ready for paint. But uh, real quick before I get painting, I'm just going to show you guys some of the tools I use. I think locking forceps is a must because when you're painting jigs you want to be able to grab the hook lock the forceps and you don't have to worry about your hot jig falling onto a surface and uh, sticking to whatever surface it falls on so I think forceps are a must this I believe is an epoxy brush from Home Depot it has these nice long bristles stick it in your brush tap off the excess paint right onto your jig um, little craft brushes will work but I like this one a little better you obviously need powder paint this is the Protec brand. I have about every color they make. Um, this stuff works great, it's durable. Um, you do have to bake it, which I'll go over in a minute, but uh, Protec powder paint works really good. I always, 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 always use a respirator. This is a real fine dust for you that aren't familiar with powder paint. This powder paint is a dust. You heat your jig up, drop this onto the jig, or stick your jig into it however you're painting it and uh, that fine dust will melt and uh, stick to whatever you're painting. So I don't like to be painting around with this stuff and having, it, and having it get into my lungs. So I wear a respirator all the time. I'm gonna do a couple jigs without it just so you guys can hear me fine, but anytime off camera, 110% of the time, I use a respirator. You need a form of heat to heat your jig up. I use a heat gun. I used to use a propane torch um, as low as that would go. I just use just a little trickle of a flame coming out but even with that, sometimes it was hot enough that it would actually melt the uh, lead right off the hook. So you need some form of a, uh, a heat source. Um, powder paint, you need to bake at 350. Again, I use just a cheap cooking tin. I did have a, like a little grill rack I put over this and uh, would hang the jigs from that grill rack, but I can't find it. Because my house is torn apart right now, I'll uh, show this in the next step after we paint. 
All you need is just something to hang this either in an oven or like a toaster oven. So what I'll do is I'll line up five, six jigs, put it on the, uh, the tray here, put it right into the oven, and uh, that'll bake fine at 350. So I think that's pretty much all you need for paint. Um, as you can see, I have gloves on. These are the same gloves I had on earlier. I like to keep that paint off my hands as best as I can. And uh, you know, when you're grabbing jigs, you're always kind of grabbing them and, and uh, manipulating them. So I like to have gloves on for this part too. But uh, I think that's pretty much everything you need. Again, I'm gonna do a couple without my respirator. But again, I use that 110% of the time um, whenever I do this off camera. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna heat this jig up. Um, I'm gonna heat it up for probably 10 seconds from the bottom. I'm going to drop on some white because I'm going to be doing a rainbow trout color jig, which is uh, one of my favorites. Um, I love that rainbow trout color. Up here in Maine, it works good. Um, for ice fishing jigs, it's my favorite color spinner bait. It works really well. So I'll show you guys how I paint that. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up the bottom, drop some white on, heat up the side, drop some pink, heat up the top, and uh, drop some watermelon. Um, I'm going to try my best so you guys can see what I'm doing. These GoPros don't pick up good focus up close, so I'll, I'll just do the best I can. So I think we're ready guys, we're going to get right into it. I'm going to pull you a little closer, so you may lose my head here, a part of my head. And something else real quick is I like to um, I like to paint on a piece of paper, so I just don't get this paint everywhere. Alright, so we're going to get started. So I'm going to heat the bottom, and I always try to keep the jig pointed away from me, because if I keep it up like this and it does drip, it could drip down onto my fingers. So anytime it's under active heat, I try to keep it away from me. So here we go, we're going to heat up the bottom. Yeah, normally five or ten seconds is all you need. Whenever you heat up lead, once it turns shiny, it's pretty much ready to throw some paint on it. I try to rock it back and forth a little bit just to heat up the sides. And I got my white right ready to go. I'm going to turn it upside down. And we're going to drop the white on. And best case scenario is this white melts immediately, which I don't think it did. I think we needed a little more heat, but that's fine. What I do is just lay the base down, and you can just go through and reheat it, and that'll stick down fine. So I don't know if you can see it. It's about 75% of what I would want it to be. So I'm just going to heat that up a little bit till it turns nice and shiny. And you want that to lay down nice and flat. All right, what we're gonna do is just wind some heat to it for another uh, five seconds or so. till it turns nice and shiny like that just did. Again, I'm sorry if that's not focusing. But you want that to turn nice and shiny. So we're gonna heat from the top. And we're gonna drop some uh, pink onto the sides. And you gotta try to do this pretty fast because that lead cools fast. So we're going to keep this on a 45, going to paint from the top down, that'll cover the sides. And that looks pretty good actually. Just going to do a quick check, yep that looks good. That melted down nice and shiny, both sides are even. So now we're going to heat the top and we're going to drop some watermelon on. Again, trying to keep the lead away from my hand in case it does drop. It won't drop onto my hand. Okay, again, trying to move relatively quickly. Knock off the excess. I'm going to drop straight down to the top. Give a quick look, quick look. A little more on this side. Knock off the excess. And that jig is ready for the oven. Both sides are nice and shiny. Both sides are relatively even. And another thing I didn't mention is you need something to hang these on. I just use my powder paint box. Um, I'll just stick it into the cardboard there, let it hang. And after a minute, you're able to handle them. So I'll just let that hang for a minute. All right, so there's another rainbow trout colored jig. Both sides look good, nice and shiny, nice and even. And I'm not gonna move the camera, but I'm gonna put this over on the hanger there. Alright, gonna get these colors packed up. 
I'll maybe show you guys like a chartreuse color. I'll make a chartreuse color that works pretty good. And for that, I'm going to use a fluorescent orange. And we're going to use a chartreuse. And I'm going to put a, just a little bit of black on top. Just to add a third color to it. And when I'm powder painting, I like to have everything ready to go. Just speeds the process up a little bit. And this one, <clears throat> and this one I'm going to do chartreuse on the bottom, orange for the sides, and a little bit of black on top. Alright, same thing. Heat. Okay, I'm going to get the chartreuse in. And some of these um, colors do melt down better than others. The white I find never melts down quite as good as like the chartreuse does. Never does quite as good as the orange. For whatever reason, that white has never laid down quite as good as some of the other colors. Okay, perfect. All right, there's a chartreuse. Laid down pretty good. We're gonna heat from the top and then put the orange on. Same thing, we're gonna go at just about a 45. 45 on both sides and for some reason these fluorescent oranges um, they kind of look red when you first pour them but after five to ten seconds it turns into that nice fluorescent orange so you could leave your jig just like that I mean that would be a, a heck of a jig and I actually do just pour two-tone but we'll throw a little bit of black onto the top let's give it an extra color in there knock off the excess straight down from the top There we go. That's just kind of a chartreuse with a little bit of a black top on it. Came out really good. Both sides are nice and shiny. Relatively even. I'm going to get this on the cardboard. Alright, I'll show you guys one other, one other pattern I like that works pretty good. And it's kind of a crawfish type of color. It has a red, a red belly with a watermelon top and a little bit of uh, black on top of it. Works pretty good. It's a real good natural color. Kind of has that crawfishy looking type of color. And I always try to drop on the problem areas first. Like the backs of the jig are always kind of a little more difficult to get. So I try to drop on them first. Kind of like the orange. That red's going to stay dark for a couple minutes. But that red uh, laid on really nicely. So now we're going to drop some watermelon on top of that. Gonna heat from the top. We're gonna go from the top down at a 45, just like we have with all the other ones. Give it a quick look. I find the watermelon doesn't go on quite as well. That may be a little dark, but that's a killer color up here in Maine. Catch a ton of fish off that color. Red bottom, uh, watermelon top. And we're just gonna throw a little bit of black on top of that. And that's looks good there may not show up well because it's kind of a dark jig but you can just see a little bit of that speckling there I hope these jigs are actually showing and it doesn't look fuzzy but uh, doing the best I can then GoPro they don't focus well up close all right so uh, I'm gonna put my respirator on and I'm gonna paint most of these jigs up I don't know if I'm gonna paint every one of them I may save a couple um, unpainted so I can paint them later but uh, we're gonna get the respirator on and crank some of these out I'll show you guys one more color that uh, I really like up here in Maine. Works good for jigs uh, and spinner baits as well. I'll show you guys one other one. And it's a white belly, chartreuse side, and a little bit of uh, black on top. Works really well. Catch a lot, again, both winter and summer on it. I don't really know what it imitates or what they think it is, but it's just a color that works really well for some reason. Here we go. I don't know if you're going to be able to see the detail that well, but it's a white bottom, chartreuse side, and a little bit of black. Fish just really seem to like it up here in Maine. Definitely one of my favorites. All right, I'm going to get back to the respirator.
All right, guys, I'm gonna wrap it up there for the painting. That's the 1 16th ounce uh, rainbow trout. I finished with that one. It's one of my favorite colors, like I mentioned earlier. So the next step is baking them. So let me get this paint taken care of, then I'll get the uh, jigs in the oven. And I don't think I mentioned uh, about the eyes. I'm gonna put eyes on them too. So once they're done baking and cooled off, I'll, I'll put the eyes on. So again, I normally have a rack I put on these, but I couldn't find it um, with the renovations we're doing. It's uh, MIA. So we're just gonna use some of these stainless steel wires that I have. And all I'm gonna do is just take these jigs. And I don't need that on now, so I'm not gonna be touching raw lead. What I like to do is give these about a jig length away from another one, just so when they swing, they don't touch each other. One more. Just spreading these out a little more. sit for 20 minutes. Okay, let me get these out. They've been in there for just about 20. All right, so these are all cooled off. I did have a couple that slid, but thankfully they didn't stick to the other jig. All right, so the next step we have to do is put some eyes on these. That's the last step. It's kind of a tedious one. Um, so what I do is I put the eyes on, then I put some UV cure epoxy um, on top of the eye because I cannot get a uh, eye to stick on these things to save my life so I got to either um, use UV cure epoxy or uh, do the the uh, two-part epoxy and uh, kind of brush it on so that's the last step we have put some eyes on them and these jigs take a really small eye I use a three millimeter eye for these so as you can see they're pretty tiny so really there's nothing fancy, um, just peel off an eye, see how small they are, I mean they're, pre they're pretty small, and uh, just put them in the, the eye slot there, I don't know if I mentioned that earlier, but it has a pre-made eye slot that these kind of drop into, I'll see if I can get them as close as I can, I'll see if I can get the camera up as close as I can, so what I try to do is just slide the eye into place. I press it into place and normally the the stock adhesive is enough to keep it there Nope, didn't that time but as you can see these eyes will not stay if you put them on you got to put something over them so that'll stay in place um, and I'll just seal it off with some epoxy later and I'll spend a lot of time doing this but I, I do take an extra second just to make sure the eyes are lined up hopefully you guys can see that they're lined up pretty good if you look up at the top so then what I do is just set them off to the side and uh, work my way through all of them all right, so this next step is going to be maybe a little tricky to film. I got my uh, UV light. This is just a cheap Harbor Freight UV light. And I have some UV resin that won't cure until you hit it with a UV light or stick it out in the sun. Well, we'll just try it. I weren't sure how I wanted to shoot this. We'll try it from this angle. I was, I was going to try to do a top over shot, but so what I'm doing is just taking this UV cure resin, just putting it on the eye, and I'm spreading it out around the eye socket. I want this resin to get all around that eye socket there. And sometimes this resin does pull the eye around. So you just try your best to keep the eye in place. And what I'm doing now is just trying to make sure everything is level, which it is. And it's as easy as hitting it with a torch for a couple seconds each side. So you just hit each eye 10 seconds or so. It doesn't take long. And that eye is nice and solid. And that eye will not move at all. That eye is on there pretty much permanent. So I'll show you guys how I streamline this process a little bit. Um, so if you do it jig by jig by jig like I just did, it takes a little longer. So I'm going to try to do a top down shot. And I'll show you guys how I do it. All right, so what I'm doing is just getting these jigs organized. Because what I'll do is I'll, I'll hold the jig down and I'll manipulate the jig as I'm putting the epoxy on. Just move that one to the side. 
at the next one. That I wanted to lift. And what I'm trying to do is put these jigs in a circle once they have the epoxy on them. Because what I'm going to do is just try to hit these all at once with a torch. That way I don't have to do it all individually. Okay. So them are all epoxied. And this is where you save some time. You can come in with your torch and hover right over these. And you can get all of them, pretty much all of them, all in one, one shot there. Get them close together so they're closer. So what I do is I'll set each one from a distance. And right now they're already solid. They're still a little tacky. Then what I do is I come in close and I'll sweep right over them couple times and that really sets that epoxy and what I found is it's rare that these eyes will move when you uh, fill them in with epoxy and I used to use the uh, two-part epoxy which works fine I just don't like taking the time to wait for them to dry yeah that'll work all right so there's side one that one's good, that one's good, that one's good. All right, they're good. All right, guys, so there you have it. There's a nice batch of handmade ice fishing jigs. Them eyes look good. They're not tacky. You know, them eyes are very unlikely to come off. I don't like to say never, but uh, them eyes um, stay on there pretty well with that epoxy. But uh, this is just the first of my uh, lure making tutorials. I'm going to show you guys how I make spinnerbaits, bass jigs, uh, trout spinners, pike spinners, um, I'm going to show you guys how I paint my uh, trolling spoons and casting spoons. I'm going to get into painting crankbaits here pretty soon. I'm going to try carving some big swim baits. Um, so that will be coming in the next month or two. If you guys have any questions about how to make these jigs, feel free to leave a comment. I'll try my best to answer them. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to fire away. But we're going to sign off on this one, guys, and we'll see you soon.